How's it going guys? So in today's geometry nodes tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this scene here. It's all geometry nodes. And if you're not very experienced with geometry nodes, this is going to be a really good introduction for you because it's not super complicated. Uh, so we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of 200 ready to use procedural materials compatible with both EV and cycles. Speeding up your workflow is important and with an easy system to apply and edit materials, you will be able to bring your renders to life a lot quicker. Change the roughness, details, and color of any material you want. There is a growing list of categories like wood materials, detailed paints, and some really awesome metallic materials. They are 100% procedural, so everything is editable, giving you control of how you want your design to look. All updates are free upon purchasing, so head over to ducky3d.com and check it out. All right, so this is the scene we're creating here, just a couple lights and this fun model. So let's go ahead and make a new blender scene here and start from scratch. So like always, delete everything in the default scene. We're gonna go and get a plane. I always start with a plane with geometry nodes because that's all you really need. We'll go to the geometry nodes workspace, kill that window. I'm gonna click new. And then here in the input, we're gonna delete that mesh primitives here, shift A, mesh primitives, and we'll go here to an icosphere. So we'll plug that into the geometry and that's kind of all the geometry nodes no, the geometry will need, tripping over my words. Let's go ahead and displace it really quickly. So in the modifiers, we're gonna go ahead and get in a displacement. So plug that there. We'll click new, click this little texture button, image or movie, and we'll go here to clouds. So I'm gonna bring that depth down, maybe bring that scale up. It's really up to your preference, but it just creates randomization. So here in the viewport, I'm hit shift A, we're gonna get an empty. This is gonna control our animation or control our displacement. So we'll go back to the modifiers here, and then we'll go from uh, local to object, and then object, pick that empty. So if you click on the empty here, and you go here to your rotation settings, you can actually play with how this animates. And if you want it more dramatic, go back to the displacement and increase that strength, and then you can go back to the empty and just kind of animate it around. So you get some really cool shapes, and you can actually loop this uh, I didn't loop it on my piece, but you can loop it if you want animated. It's really cool. So now we have this done. And what's really cool about this being a geometry node, so if you go back to the modifiers and click on geometry nodes, you can bring up your subdivision. All right here. It's really cool. And that's what's super powerful about geometry nodes. So add modifier here. We'll get another geometry nodes because we need to be able to instant some stuff and the displacement's going to throw everything out of whack if we don't make a new one. So now we have a new tree. We're gonna go ahead and instance on points. So instance on points, we'll shift A, mesh primitives, and get in another icosphere. And we'll plug that into the instance here. Now we have all that. I'm gonna bring my subdivisions up a little bit, maybe to four. And then here on the scale, I'm gonna click and drag so we can scale them all at the same time. And then we'll just bring it to something like that. We're just kind of eyeballing it. And then if you want them to be shade smooth, we'll just go ahead and type in smooth. So uh, is shade smooth, actually that's the wrong one. So set shade smooth and we'll plug it right there. Now they're smooth. Now let's go ahead and get a join geometry because we need to do two more things here. So join geometry or actually make two more mo movements or whatever. So let's go ahead here on the geometry of the input, plug that straight to the join geometry. Now we have that. And one thing, one more thing we're gonna do is bring this down and we'll get a, we're gonna make a round wireframe. So we're gonna get a mesh to curve, mesh to curve, plug that there, and we're gonna get a curve to mesh. So curve to mesh, and then we're gonna get a circle and plug that right here to the curve profile and give that radius 0.01. Now we have that. Now I need to go ahead and plug this geometry here into the input again, because we lost it, there we go. Now we've created this, really cool, really fun. Um, we'll go ahead and maybe bring the instance scale down of those, those spheres, something like this. There we go, now we've created this scene. Let's go ahead and shade it and light it and have some fun. So I'm gonna go ahead here on the plane and just give it a big plane, something like that. And then I'm gonna click on both of these. So I'm gonna click this, hold down shift, click this, and I'm gonna bring this up. 
So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pick the shape that I want this to be. So I'm gonna hit R twice and just kind of move this around till I like the composition of my object. I'm gonna go back to layout here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick how I want my object to look just through random. There we go, that's pretty cool. That's kind of, that might be exactly what I did last time, who knows? So, so I'm just hitting R twice and moving it around randomly till I like the shape of this object. Now, if you animate it, this won't matter. You wouldn't want a floor because it's gonna really kind of mess with you, but I like where this is going. So we're gonna stick to this. I'm gonna go ahead, so I'll get this to the center of the scene. Now let's go ahead and get our EV settings set up. So here in the camera icon, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag on all these check marks and then we'll check that out. Now what I'm gonna do, so now I'm gonna go ahead and save my scene. So we'll go ahead go on the desktop and call this AVS. My cat just frantically jumped in my lap. I'm collar training her, so she's very dramatic. Okay, so we're just gonna call this ABS for abstract, and then I'm gonna go ahead and save it to the desktop. So now what we're gonna do is get in a area light, and then bring it all the way up here. And I want it to be small. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make it really small, and then I'm gonna get an instant. So Alt D, and then hold down Control, so that it snaps to the grid. That's what I want. So we'll do that, and then I'll do that again. So Alt D, holding down Control, doing that. And what happens is when I make an instance or Alt D, when I change the color or anything, they all do the same thing. So you're controlling one um, light at the same time all the time. So Alt D, and then doing this here, Alt D, doing that here. And the reason why we're doing this is just creates a different effect in the reflections, also creates a different effect in the volume that we're gonna add in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this world brightness down to black. And then here in the volume, go ahead and give it principal volume. And then we'll bring that density down just like that. And so now here in the volume, you can actually see those lights. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my camera. So set it up right about here, camera, control, alt, zero, snap it to view. In the camera settings, I do like to have my focal length at 85. I just like the way that looks. I'm gonna hit G and then middle click to zoom out and hit G just like this. So in the lights, I'm gonna go ahead and make them a bit brighter. Bring the color around just cause kind of bluish look. In the camera icon, I'm gonna scroll down here to color management and make my look here to high contrast. So that's gonna give you a nice contrasted look. Now let's create some materials. So we're gonna go here to the material here and I'm gonna click the plus icon, click new, hit the plus icon again, click new, we're gonna use two materials. Let's go back here to shading and here on slot, we'll go, I guess we'll just go ahead and look at slot number two. So we're gonna make this metallic and then we actually have to go back to geometry notes here. So let's go slot two, make it metallic and then make it nice and dark. And then slot one, we're gonna go ahead and make that metallic as well and keep it a brighter color. So let's go back to geometry nodes and pick those objects or pick those materials. So here we can kind of see what we're looking at. So I want this main section, which is this. If we look at this line, that's the main section. So we're gonna do set material. I can only use one hand because my cat's in my lap. Set material and we're gonna use that dark metallic. Okay, so that's that line going straight here. Now this mesh to curve, section right here, that line is the wireframe. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift D on this material, do there, but actually we're gonna select it and do the light color. And then right here, I'm gonna and put it right here on this one with the instances. So now the light metal is on the spheres and the wireframe, the dark metal is on that main hole, whatever. Now we can go back to shading and make some materials. So we're gonna keep this light material just kind of the same right there. And we're gonna add some detail to this main section. Now in my original render, I used one of my materials from the material pack, the real-time materials, but in this case, we'll just make something similar. So let's go ahead and get a Voronoi. Voronoi texture. Now all my cats are on my desk. So now we're back in the shading workspace. I'm gonna go here to slot two, which is that dark color. And we're gonna go ahead and get a color ramp like always. And we're gonna get a Voronoi. Voronoi texture. We're gonna plug the color into the color ramp and we'll plug the color into 
the roughness and let's go ahead and get a bump node. Oop, I hit H not G, there we go. And let's get a bump, bump node and we'll plug the normal into the normal and we'll plug the color into the bump so we get some detail within this ob object. Now we have this, typically I would add a mapping setup but I like how it's kind of stretching so I'm gonna leave it there. I do like the way that looks so I'm not bothered by it. And then what we can do also is get another color ramp, plug the color into that, and then we can kind of control our color as well if we want some darker colors, which I kind of want. So there we go, now we're getting some darker colors with that Voronoi. So now we have our scene basically. Let's go back on the floor here. Let's go ahead and just make it a nice metallic floor, make it a little bit rough, just like that. And then here on the area lights, we'll go ahead and just make them a lot brighter to get that distribution of the light. Nice reflections. So here on the floor, I did add this emissive object here. So we're gonna go ahead and get in a cube and then I'm gonna go ahead and squish it. So here in my transform settings, I'm gonna squish this to be really thin, make it smaller. And then I do want it to be right here on the edge, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead back to the material preview I'm gonna give it that light metallic here, and then I'm gonna hit tab, go up here to my face select, select here, I'm gonna hit the plus icon, and then we're gonna assign that new material to this face. So you can select a face and assign a new material to it. And we're gonna go ahead and assign this here. So we'll click assign, click the new button, and we're just gonna make an emission material, nice and blue. I'm gonna hit zero to go to my camera view and the official view and make that nice and glowy, or glowing. Glowy isn't a word. And there we go, now we have this scene. So now we have the basic scene here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get my camera and tighten in that view, maybe hit G, I'm hit R to move it up a little bit. Just hitting R twice to kind of play around with my rotation. There we go, now you could do it in cycles. It actually looks a little bit better in cycles from what I remember. We'll go to the GPU here. So it looks pretty cool in cycles as well. If you wanna render in cycles, it's definitely gonna be more photorealistic. And I'm gonna leave the rest up to your creative direction, how you wanna set the scene up, add some more clouds, add a better floor. So this is the basic setup you can do in Geometry Notes. So have some fun. Thank you guys for watching. And if you wanna check out real-time materials, check it out in the description. I'll see you in the next video.